Hi, Bob Canote, Camp Chaos Chronicles. And we got a special treat for you today. What you see here is a pre-1988 Jaguar V12 HE engine. And we bought this in North Minneapolis for $40 out of a backyard. It comes complete with transmission, starter, distributor, throttle turntable, ignition amplifier, oil cooler. Pretty complete, but this isn't what this episode is about. It's about that. Dang it. Well, first for a bit of a disclaimer. We have nothing to do with a Dwyer and Michaels morning show, the twodorks.com website, or anything else that you might see displayed on this vehicle. Back in 2010, having driven my track car to Brainerd International Raceway, I determined that this was not a car that is going to be conducive to long distance traveling. So what I had to come up with was number one, a trailer, which I did, and number two, a vehicle with which to haul it. Now, this vehicle was, as you can see, used by a uh, radio station in uh, Illinois, Iowa area, and they used it for a variety of things, special events. The, uh, uh, the owner of the vehicle used it uh, in his DJ business, and uh, it's got a pretty good electrical system in it for that reason. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that, as you can see, this is, or was originally, an ambulance and it's got an ambulance motor, it's got ambulance brakes, ambulance suspension, it's got all the stuff that a, an ambulance Ford E350 is gonna have. And uh, one of the attractive things about it was not the vinyl wrap. The attractive thing was the price. It's, uh, it was for sale on eBay for $4,000. And, or at least that's the starting bid, and I bid and I got it for $4,000. So let's take a walk around this thing and see what we've got. Now the thing that attracted me to the Ford E350 platform is the 7.3 liter power stroke diesel. This is an engine that was produced by International for Ford in 2001, which is the year that this vehicle was produced. It ran as a ambulance, for five years, six years, and then it was turned into a promotional vehicle with this, with this company. And the Power Stroke Diesel is known as a good torque motor. It's not real good as far as mileage is concerned. Pulling a trailer gets about 11, without a trailer it gets about 12. So it's not a really efficient motor, but gas is or fuel is is pretty inexpensive right now so the uh, um, the electrical system on it is pretty extensive you see you can see that we got one battery right here uh, which is almost new at this point it's got one alternator up there and it's got another one down at the bottom and if we come around to this side right here We can see that we've got two more batteries here, and we've got a DC-AC inverter, which allows us to run 110 volt appliances and tools off of a 12 volt system. So uh, you can also notice that in here we've got room for what used to be the oxygen bottle. The plan here is in the future, uh, tap a compressor into this, this electrical system, and then have a cylinder here for a compressed air, uh, a compressed air system with a uh, an air chuck out the back and a little cabinet enclosed in a door. If we come around to this side, we can see the step sides right here, which make it easier to get in and out. You can also see that we got some rush issues that we're going to be dealing with next summer or this summer right down there now let's take a look inside here we've got a large entry door on the side 
And you can see that this thing has everything that a guy who's towing a race car needs. First of all, I've slept in here at the racetrack a few times and not a bad place to be. There's a cabinet up here for your clothes and your helmet and uh, all the stuff that you need from a domestic standpoint. There's cabinets everywhere. Here we've got what is essentially the toolbox for the weekend. I pretty much empty out the top half of my toolbox in my shop, stick it in here, and I've never been without a tool. we got cabinets here that we store things like the tie downs for the trailer. We also have ramps here, being that I lowered the vehicle and put headers on it, it's difficult to get it on and off the trailer without scraping, so we need to provide some additional clearance as we roll it on. We've got a cord up here to attach to a 110 power source uh, with the shoreline uh, socket on the outside, places to hang electrical cords. Also right here, this is where we lash in spare tires. And, uh, and you can see that we've got, we're hanging our compressed air tank here. Our floor jack is mounted right here. Bucket of floor dry. And here on this side, what we do is install our, there's a couple of tables that we take with us that we lash in here. A couple of chairs, cabinets up here for chemicals. Same thing up here, miscellaneous tools, and, uh, and so forth. Oh, also, we have an air conditioning system, which we're currently working on getting running, both air conditioning and heat back here. Um, and that cabinet right there, that's the mystery cabinet. That cabinet won't, op won't open. We don't know what's in that cabinet. We may go treasure hunting one day here. And also, we have full lighting in the back. It's kind of hard to see in the daylight here, but, but uh, it's got everything that you really need for a race weekend. Oh, and also right here, this little cubby hole where uh, the, uh, the extra medical person used to sit, we've, uh, we've used that for uh, fuel can storage, for race fuel for the weekend. So, pretty extensive. I mean, this, if you, if you tow a race car, you need one of these because this is perfect without a question of a doubt. So let's take a look and see what it's like up front here. Now up here in the command center, there's all sorts of stuff to play with. And as I was driving it back from Iowa, where I picked this thing up after I bought it, it was a fun trip. We've got this panel up here, which does all the lights and, uh, and functions that are related to the, the chassis of the vehicle. For example, here's our master switch, which turns everything on here. We've got the light bars and the, the uh, sequencing of the lights. We've got uh, left load, right load, rear load. These are great when you're loading up the car after dark or you got to work on something. Uh, these are high intensity floodlights outside of the vehicle. Uh, horn, siren, uh, dome lights and so forth. Uh, they got a little light back there for patient status. Most of this stuff really doesn't have anything to do with running a race car, but it's kind of fun. Down below here, we've got the, the main siren panel, master, don't, we don't want to uh, irritate the neighbors, so we won't go hog wild with that. We also have a PA system, which is also fun at the racetrack. So there we are. This is, uh, and also we have our cup holder and sort of a navigation table for the cell phone right here and uh, other than that it's pretty much uh, standard standard E350 stuff. Now this thing right here is the whole reason why I got this. This is a 10,000 pound trailer hitch which, uh, which uh, is more than adequate for the towing that we do with it. The real issue that we've had with this is getting the lighting in the back, the trailer lights and also the direct
directionals and and uh, and brake lights and so forth to work together and uh, a not insignificant amount of money has been spent on that but it's working now and it uh, and it's uh, pretty much trouble free at this point. In this little compartment right here, you can see we got a spare tire. We got the uh, got a hydraulic jack, which you know we got a lot of tires on this rig, so you really need to have a, a spare for everything. Now, what are the plans that we have for this vehicle? Well, as it stands right now, if we've got an open trailer, we need to have a place to lock everything up. So. Um, it's going to pretty much stay the way it is. However, door sticks a little bit. The plan eventually is to convert this into a mini motorhome. And the plan would be to have a little kitchenette up front there on the left hand side. A couple of uh, cots right here, maybe across the back. The back end of the vehicle would be closed, sealed up and then uh, an adequate seating area for two people right there with a sort of a picture window on the side of the vehicle. And then of course all the electrical stuff uh, and also a, uh, uh, a heater of some sort uh, for cold, cold evenings. And, uh, and the reason for that of course is whenever you go to a race, racetrack and you're not coming home the same day, if you're staying overnight, it's typically 100 bucks a night for two people. So it doesn't take much if you're an active racer to pay for something like this. Uh, it's not going to be full service in here. There's not gonna be a restroom and, and uh, that sort of thing, but just enough for a place for two people to, to spend the night and uh, have every amenity that you would need other than bathrooms. So it's going to be it's going to be really pretty nice i'm uh, kind of excited about getting started on that project not sure when that's going to be but as i said earlier i think an ambulance a retired ambulance is the perfect vehicle to be running or to be towing a race car with i think you need one of these We're going to escape from Camp Chaos for a few minutes and give you some driving impressions of the Bruise Mobile. It's, it's a big old thing. I mean, it's not the largest of the ambulance type of vehicle. It does accelerate pretty quickly and even with a trailer on the back. It has sufficient torque where you can catch up to traffic pretty quickly. And once you get it up to speed and get the cruise control set, you really don't even know that the trailer is back there. It's, uh, it actually is more stable with the trailer on the back. And in terms of braking, if the trailer brakes are adjusted properly, it seems to brake actually better than it does without a trailer on it. I gotta say that this is probably the most comfortable vehicle, even though I drive a lot of Jaguars. Now that I drive the seating position is kind of upright and sort of like a, a living room chairs, sort of a seating arrangement, and uh, the environmental controls, the heat and the air conditioning, the ventilation is perfect. The brakes have been a little bit of a problem over the years. I had them overhauled in 2014, and just recently in 2020 had to have the rears redone because they had rusted to the point where the right size side had seized. So, so that has been a bit of an issue. Although we don't really use it that much, probably use it 
10 times a year and we probably don't wash it as much as we should but it is what it is it's been a really nice addition to to the fleet out here in fact you know it's it's been a really necessary part of the team not only do we use it for towing a trailer with a track car on it but anytime I go pick up long lengths of steel or sheets of plywood or things of that nature, uh, this is the this is the vehicle that gets the call. So I sometimes take it out and just drive it for fun. Part of that has to do with the wrap that's on the outside because it always seems to bring a smile to the face of everybody that sees it. But. Really, it's just kind of a fun vehicle to drive. And as you know, I'm all about fun. 